Good evening, everybody. We're back again with another video, sooner than I anticipated, but uh, hey, it's all good. Uh, tonight, uh, we're looking at the uh, WA-1 FFL uh, VFO kit, and uh, it's put together by uh, a fellow called uh, James Haggerty down in uh, the States. Uh, he runs a little outfit called the Haggerty Radio Company, so uh, uh, one of the kits that he provides or, or manufactures is these uh, VFO kits. Here's a picture it's included in the uh, instructions. It's an actual photograph of the completed device. Um, here is all the parts. Uh, we have individually bagged components. Makes it nice and easy. We have the board uh, in the uh, circuit board inside uh, a little uh, electrostatic bag here and we have uh, we can see that a lot of the uh, surface mount components have been installed already uh, we have uh, a picture of uh, some component placement details uh, so that's nice and uh, some instructions and the instructions are very very uh, uh, basic and uh, simple to understand so great for uh, somebody who is uh, diving into their first project uh, this would be a good one for you um, I'm going to use this uh, VFO. I have actually two of these. I'm going to put them together. Uh, one's going to go on to my AM uh, station for 80 meters, and the other one will be used with the uh, FR12 uh, that is uh, sitting over there, waiting in the lineup to uh, be uh, properly restored. Pardon the mess. It's always like this. Anyway, we'll bring it back. Uh, and uh, in a bit here when uh, we've uh, got something to show you. Okay, we're back with the uh, now assembled WA-1 FFL uh, VFO kit. So I've got it all put together. Uh, before you put the chips in, you should uh, always check to make sure that your uh, regulated voltages are, vol voltages are correct. So uh, on the first one here, we should have 9 volts. On the second one, we should have 3.3 and then down here on this right there we should have 5 volts so we're all set <clears throat> ready to go so I've got the uh, put all the chips in I have a jumper wire on the keying line here and we have our uh, 10 megahertz out just about 10 megs so we're all set to go to the uh, the next step of adding the uh, the display and uh, encoder section. Okay, we're back here now. We have uh, everything all assembled on the bench and wired up. And uh, we have a uh, test frequency of uh, 3735, which is a common one I usually use. So uh, I stored that in its memory. It's got 16 memories, and I calibrated that memory so it's uh, on frequency. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, we'll just uh, Give it a try on the, uh, the switchboard here. There's a spot button. So I'm just going to key the thing on. We'll go over here. We'll look at my IFR. So that's currently set up for uh, 1 kilohertz. We'll crank her down a little here. Let's see where how close it is. Well, that's pretty close. That's close enough for HF. So that's... Uh, plus or minus 100 hertz there so we're very close we're within, within a few so that's pretty nice so I'm pretty pleased with that so the next step here is to uh, mount this in a box we have the boxes here I've uh, taken the uh, front off and taped it I'm going to draw out my uh, my layout on the front of that and I happen to have some square uh, greenly punches that uh, are the perfect size for that display so I think this will look good so I'm going to make this into two videos this is video number one uh, I will uh, come back with a, a second uh, new video uh, when I have it all together and uh, we'll try it out with the uh, FRT 501 so until then we'll see you then 